What's up, guys, and welcome, Daily Theologians. Donald Trump was almost assassinated. You're not going to want to miss what people are missing in all of this talk about what's next. Are people going to lose it and go even further? You're not going to want to miss this one. Stick around and check this out. So let's get into it. Here is the clip. So a pretty dramatic moment, not unexpected, to be honest with you, with the uh, amount of rhetoric, the accusations, the flaming vitriol from both sides, really. Uh, what is the solution here? We're going to get to that, but I want to show just how close this was. Okay, so here is the picture that the photographer took, uh, and that's presumably the bullet or a bullet, uh, one that hit his ear. Now, when you think about this, this is a very important topic to address from a biblical perspective. It's the issue of providence. Is this all random chance? Are we in the matrix? Is, is there actually some rhyme or reason to what it is that we're observing around us? And of course, the answer is yes. Spoiler alert. But I want to get into the providence of God today. I want to explain history and why it's cyclical. And things like this have been happening forever and ever. So we're going to talk about Archduke Franz Ferdinand. We're going to hear from Dr. Fresca. We're going to talk about the one in Baptist Confession. And we're also going to hear from a guy that is actually pretty hilarious. Here's a guy responding as Donald Trump. You can take my ears, but you cannot take my liberty. They want to cut off my ears like the Taliban, but what they don't know is my ears can grow back like SpongeBob through budding, by the way. Hit me with your best shot, why don't you? Because if that's the best you got, you're a loser. You're such a loser, you missed so bigly, by the way. You had a big opportunity. You could have made my head blow up on TV, but you didn't do that, did you? Now my ear is going to grow back bigger and better. It will have better hearing. I will hear like an owl. So obviously pretty funny stuff from that guy and uh, props to him. I told him I was going to use his clip. There it is. Um, but that is kind of how Trump thinks. Like, I'm going to come back better. Uh, kind of lost part of your ear. But uh, it's very serious. People are upset. But as Christians, what makes a difference is our perspective, our trust in the providence of God and the sovereignty of God uh, when it comes to salvation. Providence of God directing and arranging all things, which we will mention in just a moment here. But I want to explain history here. So you've probably heard of this guy before, and uh, it's the Archduke Franz Ferdinand. When it was learned that the heir apparent to the Austrian throne, Franz Ferdinand, was scheduled to visit Sarajevo in June of 1914, the Black Hand decided to assassinate him because it was a perceived threat to the Serbian independence. They wanted to pull in other nations to basically liberate them. And it dominoed into World War I. And World War I, because of these sanctions put on Hagen, Hagen, the Germans, uh, it became uh, World War II because economically they really couldn't survive. So Hitler rose to power, was insane, but very charismatic. And uh, thus, ultimately, potentially, was the uh, domino, the link, because of the uh, restrictions, sanctions from Germany that they pushed 
out into the extreme. And of course, they had to find a villain. Now, all of that was in God's sovereignty and in his providence, he allows certain things to happen like the assassination of Franz Duke Ferdinand. Now, I am very grateful that Trump is uh, okay. And I think this potentially will be used for good. And I'll explain how I think that is the case. But first, let's just take a moment and think about what is providence, given how close the world came to uh, what some people are saying, potentially a civil war. I like to compare the doctrine of providence to miracles. Um, a miracle is when God suspends natural law to do something outside of natural law and without natural law and against the grain of natural law. That's a miracle. Walking on water, whatever it is, raising dead people, whatever our Lord did, that suspends natural law and supernaturally invades time and space and acts in a divine way that has no human explanation. Providence, in my mind, is a greater miracle than a miracle because it is God accomplishing his own ends and his own purposes, not by suspending natural law, but by taking all the elements of natural law and blending them together in a masterful way that he achieves his purpose but never interrupts what is the natural and normal course of things. This is providence. It is God not suspending circumstances and acting. It is God taking all the contingencies, all the actors and all their activities and all their thoughts and words, and somehow out of all of that, pulling it together to create exactly what he wills to do. That is a far more massive miracle than just suspending natural law and acting. And, that, you know, I look at my life, and I know you do, Chris, as well, and I know R.C. did. Every day I see that. Every day of my life is a day full of providence. And it's, it's, a, different, it's a different providence every day. It's, it's something, wow, how did that happen? Whatever made those circumstances come together to, to, to bring it to this point. So we live in the, in the, I think, the most thrilling thing about the Christian life is providence. Just seeing it unfold day in and day out. And if you're in tune with the Lord and in tune with his word, you're really seeing it unfold. And, and, and you see God at work in ways that have no human explanation. Do you have So God's providence, he is sovereign over every single event. He permits evil. In fact, when we look at the Bible in Genesis chapter 50, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Meant it. I could go home now, Dr. Piper. That's the famous clip. Meant it. He didn't use it. He didn't kind of rearrange it. He meant it. So uh, when it comes to providence, what MacArthur was uh, demonstrating there was the difference between primary causes, secondary causes. Miracles are primary interventions from God in some sort of way where he directly intervenes. Uh, secondary causes providence. He causes things to work for our good. And uh, we see that with Joseph. And we see that with people all throughout the history of the universe and the history of the Bible. And God is orchestrating and sovereignly uh, arranging his plan to save the elect, to save actual Christians, actual people. He's not leaving us independent or autonomous. Now, people are responsible for their evil. And I want to take just a second. This was very evil. A, a man died that was at the uh, at the rally. And he was a fire chief from all accounts, great guy, and was protecting his family. And so real people died. Uh, others were wounded. And, and there's one, I think, still potentially in critical condition. And events like this can turn the course of millions of people's lives. Uh, look at Ferdinand. Look, look at people throughout history. This is what happens. And it tips things over and people are on edge. So we have to look at providence from the London Baptist Confession. God, the good creator of all things in his infinite power and wisdom, upholds, directs, arranges and governs all creatures and things from the greatest to the least by his perfectly wise and holy providence to the purpose of which they were created. He governs according to his infallible foreknowledge and the free and unchangeable counsel of his own will. His providence leads to the praise of the glory of his wisdom, power, justice, infinite goodness and mercy. All that he does is good. All that he does is good. And there is nothing that God does that is evil. He permits evil. He allows evil but he is not the cause of evil. Everything he does is good and right. Which brings me to what is needed. What can we learn from this? Was it chance? Was it, was it blind 
fate? Well, no, of course not. This was in the plan of God for the purposes of God, for the glory of God. And what I believe is needed is the preaching of the gospel. This is always going to be my answer. This saving repentance is a gospel grace. So what do people need in our nation? We need to repent. We need to fear God. We need to turn to the true and living God and trust the Bible. We need to understand that there is only one God and one mediator between God and men. So this gospel grace in which those who are made aware by the Holy Spirit of the many evils of their sin by faith in Christ humble themselves for it with godly sorrow, hatred of it, and self-loathing. They pray for pardon and strength of grace and determine and endeavor by provisions from the Spirit to live before God in a well-pleasing way in everything. Now, a smart person, a wise person, would look at the events of history and say, what was needed? Well, what was needed was the preaching of the gospel and repentance specifically. Donald Trump should say, I repent, I have not done right in all areas. Other people all around this thing should say, I repent. Now I'm not blaming him for what happened to him. I wanna make that crystal clear, not saying this is his fault. I'm saying when we have a close brush with something this serious, we need to examine ourselves and determine where we are individually before God, because we will all appear before the judgment seat of God and we have to give an account to God and the unrighteous will be thrown into a very sad place called hell. So the day is short, the days are evil and the time is now to repent and believe the gospel. So this is God's kindness towards uh, Trump, towards others, to evaluate the brevity of life, kind of the the, the delicate nature of life. And the really the best uh, explanation of this that I heard, uh, I listened to briefly and agree with what he was saying was Dr. Al Mohler from the briefing. I would check out his response from Monday. He did a special uh, briefing on this specifically. And he, of course, goes through, guess what? Providence, because this is the providence of God. God is sovereign and therefore provides through secondary causes and things like that. And so all things work to good. For those that are called according to the purposes of God, that's the elect, Romans 8 and 9. Christians, all things work together. Now, in a common grace way, God allows and permits good things for all people in some measure. Uh, you know, So it's not certainly uh, ideal, but when you have a brush with death like this, it could cause us to examine where we're standing and examine the gospel. Examine what, what if your life were to... Uh, be cut short in some way. Now, in the purposes and plan of God, that's not going to happen. But from our perspective, certainly could happen. And what will you do on that day? The answer to all of this is, of course, you need to be born from above. You need a new heart. God must remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. That's Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27, John 3. You must be born again. You must repent and believe in the life, in the death, in the burial and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that God made him who knew no sin to be sin so that by him we might become the righteousness of God, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Galatians 5, 1, you are free in Christ. Therefore, do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. So if you're trying to earn your salvation by being religious, give that up too. I'm not saying keep the law so God will accept you. I'm saying surrender to God and he will give you a new heart to believe that he actually saves you apart from anything in you at all, not anything in you at all. It's all a work of God. The faith you have would be a gift of God. The repentance you would have is a gift of God, which is all a work of God, which means it's the grace of God producing faith and repentance in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ. God is a trinity, three persons, one being, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, co-equal, co-eternal and make sure that's clear as well. If you have any questions, leave them below. Let me know what your reaction to all of this insanity was. And by the way, if you're not reading Chosen by God by R.C. Sproul or Essential Truths of the Christian Faith by the R.C. Sproul, I highly recommend it. Also want to put a plug in for an audio book from Ray Comfort. It's uh, the School of Biblical Evangelism Express, Express on Audible. 15, I think it's 25 lessons, 15 bucks. It's really good and it's done really well. So definitely check out that stuff. Thank you so much. If you're still watching this rant, take a moment and hammer that like button. Like the 95 Theses. Thank you so much and God bless.